Hey, Michael. Hey, Sonia. Welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. Hi. We are glad that you all are here with us because you all are here to share an incredible story of debt elimination that is surely going to fire up our audience and help them on their journeys to debt freedom as well. But before we start to dig into your story and find out how you guys were able to do this, can you just take a moment and introduce yourselves to everybody that's listening and let them know what you're all about? Sure. Well, I'm, we're Michael and Sonia Pope. We've been married for almost 20 years, be 20 years this May. <laughs> and yeah. the family. Oh, oh. Uh, so I'm 41. He'll be 43 next week. And we have three sons, a 10 year old, an eight year old and a four year old who seem to eat a lot while we're going through this process. Yeah. And grow a lot, too. <laughs> and so professionally, I do corporate IT work. So mostly web development, application development. Yeah. And I'm a stay-at-home mom. I actually resigned once um, I had my first child. Love that. Awesome. Love that. Beautiful couple. Yeah, wow. indeed. Been married 20 years. I'm like, they look so young. That's incredible. Man, wonderful. So let's talk about the debt. You guys had a lot of debt. Tell our audience how much debt it was and what type of debt it was. Okay. Okay. So we're in a total of $119,000 in debt. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> so $119,000 in debt. And the way you break that down is 60000 of that was for a condo that we left unoccupied for about 20 months. So so most of our debt is what I would consider a stupid debt. Mm -hmm. So we bought a new house, thought we would quickly sell our condo, and it's on the market empty um, for about 20 months. Mm -hmm. And then the other debt consisted of two cars that we had refinanced twice, so more dumb debt. <laughs> And we had eight credit card accounts and one personal loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's so one hundred nineteen thousand. Now we still paid our mortgage, both of them, while we moved out. But we had two mortgages. Wow. Yes. Yeah, we know how that feels. Wow. We had a rental property, remember? And yeah. I think we held it for probably eighteen months. Something like that. Oh, that was awful. Nightmare. Oh my All caps. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> mm -mm. So I mean, but at one point. This didn't seem like stupid debt to you all. At one point, you thought it was normal or typical to have the car notes and the refi of the car notes. And, you know, you thought you would sell the condo. You bought, you found a house that you liked and you thought that you all would sell the condo. But now, in retrospect, you guys realize that these were not good decisions. I mean, eight credit card accounts, right? Mm -hmm. But at one point, that was just a part of life for you all. So what caused a shift in your mentality to say that I don't think what we're doing with our finances is the right way to do this. We need to figure out how to make a change. What caused that shift? Well, I say Sonya has always wanted us to be debt free. I just didn't listen. I was too stubborn. I thought I could out earn the problem, but I, but I was wrong, obviously. So what happened was after doing our taxes in early February 2016, I did our taxes and I looked at how much money we had made that year and and then how much debt we were in. Mm -hmm. And it started and it really started to hurt. I mean, it actually, I mean, I felt like breaking down in tears because I felt like I couldn't work any harder. I couldn't earn any more money necessarily. But we were still running out a month. We were running out of money before we ran out a month, mm -hmm. every single month. And I, I, you know, I didn't realize what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talked about it the other day and what we realized is that and the essential what we're doing, we were using what we say, we're using our credit cards as, as our um, emergency. emergency fund, mm -hmm. and then we were using our our credit score as our sinking fund, if yeah. you will. You know, getting new credit if we needed to, zero percent interest here, because mm -hmm. we thought that was just the norm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I like how he put that. Yeah, like that is reality. A mm -hmm. lot of people do that. They use their credit cards as an emergency fund and they're, oh, I have a great credit score. Yeah. I know people personally that say my credit score is great, but they have debt. So why save for furniture if they're going to give it to us for 0%? Right. Wow. That was such a powerful statement. Such a powerful statement. You, you don't even think about paying for things anymore. For sure. So Sonia, you, you kind of were the catalyst here, but Michael was very, very resistant at first. So help that wife that's listening right now. Who's been like trying to get their husband to open their eyes, but their husband still has not. How were you able to get through to Michael and how were you able to stay patient during that process? 
You know, I was just patient and I just prayed for his heart to change. I I think really it's not a person that's going to change somebody's heart. It's going to be God that's going to help change their heart. Um, I married him and I had no debt. But when I married him, I did marry his debt. And we like paid off some, got some more, paid off Mm -hmm. some, got some more. Um, So really, I waited for his heart to change. And I would do budgets kind of on my own. Like, hey, let's pay cash for this. Let's save up for this. But you know, I really had to just be patient and wait for his heart to change. And when his heart changed, um, he came to me and I actually he, he presented me with let's do FPU. And I was like, or Financial Peace University, for those of you who are unfamiliar. And I was at first I said no, because I didn't want to do it and still keep debt, still use credit cards and basically be a hypocrite. So I was like, either we do it or we don't. So I said, no. And then he's like, well, I already, I already got the kid or I think he already ordered the kid. And I was like, okay, well, that's fine. So I agreed to go. And a couple of times we asked people to watch the sitter, you know, watch the kids or, you know, put in our budget to have to pay a sitter to watch our three boys, um, you know, so that we could go and just be unified Mm -hmm. together because I think God just really blesses unity. So I was unified with him in the debt. But I was going to be unified with him in paying off the debt. And we this plan was a plan that we could both follow. It didn't conflict with our Christian views on tithing already, but it was something that we could unify. We could speak the same language because we're actually both nerds. Um, I'm a nerd saver. He's a nerd spender. spender. So he could put a, like a ton of Excel spreadsheets together to really talk about how much we're going to be paying out all the time but i'd be like let's just save it not spend anything not go anywhere let's not have any fun let's just like save money (laughs) so i just had to wait for his heart to change love that you know i think um you guys are bringing up a good point about his heart changing we too are christians and um you know we believe that god has put the man as the head of the home and so it's so important as a leader to take initiative um although you heard your wife talking to you saying you know we need to do this he took initiative and actually purchased the kit Michael, talk to leaders out there. Let them know how important it is to actually, you know what, get your family together um, financially so. I think it's, it's, it's totally important, especially in our situation. I mean, my wife had trusted in me to be a stay-at-home mom. I mean, she left a very successful corporate career a little over 10 years ago to be a stay-at-home mom, trusting that I could provide for our family. And I was doing the absolute opposite of that. Because we had good income coming in, we were going deeper and deeper in debt, which, which made no sense. I mean, so for that, anybody that wants to be a leader of their household, I mean, I say definitely unify with your wife. But you have to, at some point, make a decision to fix the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's 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 what I was going to do. I was going to make sure that we fix the problem. Yeah, we just we took ownership of our decisions so that we could we had to acknowledge it. If we didn't acknowledge it more than just looking at the debt, our past thought process. If we didn't acknowledge it and choose to change it, we would just pay off the debt and go right back into debt because we might have had maybe a month or two with no debt, but we'd always did go right back into it because we didn't have a plan and we didn't talk about it. Now you all got on the same page after a while. Michael's heart did change. He went out and got FPU, Financial Peace University kit. You guys started to go. So that was a big, huge step in the right direction. Help our audience understand more about some of the practical things that you all implemented into your lives that was able to take you from being deep in debt to debt free. Well, one of the things is, um, is we developed a drive to be being financially free. I mean, Slay and I already had a good understanding of God's laws of prosperity. So we had to develop the drive to go ahead and make it work. And so I kind of use drive as an acronym. So I'll, so D is for decision. So, so right away we made a decision that, you know, Dave Ramsey's plan, FPU, was going to be our plan for becoming financially free. So we, we decided right then and there, once we got into the, pro, in the program, a couple, after a couple weeks in the program, and we made a decision that, hey, this is going to work. And we could see that it was going to work. We got after it. So, so D is making a decision. The R is reasons. We had to, you know, sit down and identify what are the reasons why we want to be financially independent? Why do we want to be debt free? 
And so there are things like just being able to take care of our family long term, being able to invest in our kids college fund, being able to travel, really not having the, the burden or the weight of, of debt on our shoulders on a regular basis. So we developed that list of reasons to help keep ourselves motivated. Then I is for inspiration. And so keeping ourselves motivated was, was key to this. And one of the things that we did was daily we listened to two, we watched two to three debt free screams on YouTube almost every single day. In addition to that, we watched shows like your show, um, you know, hearing about other people getting out of debt and just different strategies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we read constantly, but we just associated with people who were having that same mindset of, of wanting to win with money. Mm-hmm. So that was the inspiration. I love that. Right, now, right. Uh, B and E. B is a vision. So we had a clear vision of what we thought our life would look like. And we would sit down and talk about it on a regular basis. I know um, Chris Hogan talks about dreaming in HD. And so we would do we would do that. I mean, we were used to dreaming. We were used to visualizing things anyway. So it was easy for us talking about, think about how it's going to be when, you know, we get to have, you know, 60% of your paycheck and to do whatever we want to do with it. Or we can travel and pay cash for it and, and what we can do and, and what lesson other boys learning. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was cool. So we had a clear vision of what we want our life to look like. Mm-hmm. And then E really, in, in my opinion, is probably the most important is we had to execute the plan. Right. Because FPU, Dave Ramsey's program, Financial Peace University, is a great program. However, if you don't do what it says, if you don't execute that plan, you know, if you compromise it in any way, it's going to take a long time. And I think one of the things that helped us pay off 119000 in 11 months is that we executed the plan to the T. We, um, we stopped our match, our retirement match at work, and we have a pretty good match at work, but we, we went ahead and stopped it. We cut cable, we cut other costs, and we just executed the plan. And we got excited. I mean, one of the things we learned from you guys on your show is that you talked about how how just earning small amounts of income, you can take that and apply to your debt. And so we got excited about $40 over here. You know, it's, it's amazing some of the things we did just to earn, you know, $25 or $40. But we did it because we knew it was all adding up to that payoff. Yeah. So so that's the drive. And you go ahead. Yeah. I mean, and I did things like looking at the YouTube videos with looking at meal plan, not just buying things in the grocery store. So I was just buying things and probably throwing away a lot of groceries. I mean, I just cut it down. And that was like a big savings, like maybe three hundred dollars a month Mm -hmm. less, just cutting out some of that excess and just realizing that we were fat and it was time to lose Mm -hmm. some weight, you know, and go on a financial diet. So um, we were just totally on board. I did some extra side things, sold things like baked goods. I mean, like just even simple things because I'm an alternative baker. Uh, I have a children that have major food allergies and things. So these are things that I did already, but I made money, some money doing it. My and, and tell them what, um, what Helen told you that. Oh, I have a friend at church who told me, uh, you need to start charging people for some of the things that you do because you need to realize that your time for sowing has ended and now it's your time to harvest. So you even though I've sown into a lot of people and given them things, it's time to like, you know, realize that it's worth, a mo- it has a monetary value and it's time for me to charge for certain things. So I help people organize their lives, their pantries, their whatever, and not charge them. Just do it just because I wanted to bless them because I feel like in blessing people, you get what you want. It might not come from that person, but it may come from somebody else. You know, I really feel like God will bless you because he sees your heart and he will provide for you, Mm -hmm. which is why we were able to pay that debt off. Because when we saw it, we really didn't think that it will be paid off at this point. But God provided promotion and increase and opportunity um, because I think he saw our heart. Um, We had a heart for him and unified team here. So Mm -hmm. he just blessed. He blessed us in every way financial, health, everything, which helped our finances. Yeah. Right there at the end. I'll oh, go ahead. In the 11 months, we took FPU twice mm-hmm. just because we wanted to make sure we kept ourselves focused on our goal. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love that. We've taken it more than yeah. once ourselves yeah. and taught it. And it's good some to people are like, yourself. why are you doing that? Because yeah. you're debt free or you don't have any consumer debt. And it's like, no, we want to continue 
knowledge is so important, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to continue to learn, continue to read, continue to strive to be better. So I think that's great. Yeah. You know, um, right there toward the end, uh, Sonia, you were saying the importance of unity. And that was what was resounding to me as you all were, were speaking there. And Michael, as he was kind of explaining the different things that you all did, he kept saying we and we did this mm -hmm. and we did that. And even when you were referring to your match, you said we, mm -hmm. you know, we had a good match at work that we cut. And I want you to speak to the importance of unity, especially to those married people live, listening to the show right now. You all had to really decide because, you know what, getting out of debt and getting your finances in order, anytime yeah. you're asked to change anything about you, mm -hmm. it's going to hurt. It's going to be tough. You're going to want to quit. You're going to want to give up. But when you have somebody that you're unified with, I'm sure that it made those moments it made those moments doable. Mm -hmm. Like you had somebody to push you through. I, I'm going to say we spoke life to the victory that we already saw, and that's paying the debt off. So we spoke life to that, and we didn't speak more life to the debt, and we didn't add to the debt. So we spoke life to that, and we spoke with each other, like just encouraging each other, like it's going to be great when we get this, because we probably just needed that push to push each other the same way we would push somebody like a teammate. Like it's mm -hmm. like, you can do it. You can do it. Yep. We can do it. Hey, got this, you know, 50 bucks or whatever. Um, we spoke life to what we wanted and stopped focusing on the debt. We addressed the debt. We acknowledged the debt, but we didn't focus on the debt anymore. We focused on freedom of being out of debt and we, so we can walk through it hand in hand, you know, like we can conquer things two th 10 times as much when you're together, mm -hmm. when you're back to back. And we did, you know, um, we just walked side by side in this and battled it. And that was our battle. And our battle cry was like, we're going to be debt free. We had a little bit longer goal, but God saw a different plan. So Absolutely. And then, I think in terms of communication, we communicated almost daily about this. You know, we, we had our budget committee meetings on a regular basis. And part of that, we tracked all of our expenses. And we still track every single penny. Yeah, up to the penny. We're tracking everything. We use everydollar.com. And so, I mean, we love it. But it it's amazing how just us talking about purchases and decisions has really increased our income right there. Because it's kept us from buying things or doing things because we knew we had to be accountable to each other. Mm -hmm. And so it opened up that communication a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. and, and while we're going through this, you sometimes have some times where you feel like things are a little bit hard. But along with reading financial books, because I don't think you need to get top heavy in any one area of life, we really focused on our relationship and that talking about money. But then also like you know, trying to have fun, but maybe like not spend a whole lot like we have been doing in the past to have fun. Yeah. Um, you know, we focused on our relationship and as our, and our, not our relationship wasn't lacking in any way, but as it even got stronger and we talked more, it's like the other details worked out more and more because we could just flow. Just get. Yeah. I have two questions. Um, one, did you tell family and friends that, you know what, guys, we're trying to get out of debt and the second question, did you have um, some type of process when paying off the debt or did you just put money on the debt whenever you all receive money? Okay. In you terms of friends, you want to talk to friends and family? Well, we really didn't tell a whole lot of friends or family, really, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because, you know, we live, you know, 600 or so miles away from any family members at all. Mm -hmm. So for us, we just decided we'll just be the example here in our own household and take care of it. We have a few friends that encourage us because they knew what we were doing and we let, we made them aware. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we learned a long time ago not to tell everybody what you're doing because everybody's not going to get it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard for people who are using credit cards on a daily basis to understand what you're doing because it's kind of like you're shining a light on their bad habit, mm -hmm. essentially saying it's dumb and, and they don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. So we just focus really on ourselves and that's why we hung out with Facebook groups that were talking about being debt free and other people that had that same mindset of being debt free and winning with the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we were adults. We really, when we, we're going to cleave to each other. So 
what we make decisions in this household, that's what impacts the household. We never had a relationship where our family members made decisions for us or funded the decisions. So we had to be strong in what we believed as a couple, not as a whole family, you know, extended family unit. So we were adults. We had to own a decision. Our families weren't. So we had to, you know, walk it out. We did. We needed to walk it out, not talk it out. Yeah. So I'm always a person who believes that you need to back up your at your words with action because a lot of people talk a lot and they don't do anything. So we we didn't talk a whole lot to other people, but our children, our children, they're like, what's a budget? We do a budget. We actually, um, we take them regularly to the bank to do a savings thing monthly, and they, monthly, monthly. And they're like, is this the day we go to the bank? Yes. And so every month they go and they deposit their age in dollars. And then on their birthday month, they do double down at the bank. So for them, you know, saving is a way of life for them, saving and giving, because they yeah. also, you know, give into the church. We talk to them about tithing because spending does not have to be taught. You can figure that out. That's kind of like the weed of the finances, yeah. but saving and giving are the lesser known and they're the flowers. But if you don't cultivate those, then the weeds will overpower or the spending will overpower and they will be in debt because society will make debt easy for them. But they're not going to have that in their life. They're going to understand budgets. They're going to understand saving and giving. Spending is going to happen. Yeah. And I kids, I mean, they love going to the bank with us love to deposit it. money. I mean, it's, it's it's so fun walking into the bank and, and not having to, like, you know, pay bills or pay debt just to be able to, to put money and watch your bank account grow. Mm -hmm. And our boys, you know, they all have their own accounts. And so when they deposit their money, they say, you know, please deposit $10 in my savings account. You know, they get their receipt and they, you know, we always look at, you know, show them their, their, um, their balance to see how your money has grown. So that's just planting that seed. Even for our four year old, I mean, we tell them, OK, look how much your money has grown from this month and that month. Mm -hmm. and, and they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they look forward to going to the bank, which I, I, I like. Right. Right. And then the second question, um, did you guys have a certain process uh, while paying off your debt or did you, did you just put money on it whenever you guys felt like it? Yeah, well, we, we go ahead. I said we, we follow the debt snowball. Mm -hmm. Very strictly, I man. So I'm a nurse. I put together a spreadsheet so we know exactly how much we need to pay off. And we were looking, you know, anytime we got an extra, we would throw at it. But we followed the process pretty much to a T. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. uh, we were just aggressive. We would always, when we go to the next one, okay, this is the next one. This is what we're doing. When we get paid, this is what we're going to put on it. Because actually, he only gets paid once a month. So we had to make the budget work for the entire month. So we were like, this is what's getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. And we just cut it off and made other things balance out to make it happen. And any extra we just took there when we were actually paying off the refinanced, refinanced cars. And I say that twice because we just kept doing it. Um, <laughs> I ended up we had the money. And I remember getting going, getting in the car myself. And just been like, I'm going to go pay this now. And he's like, we could go tomorrow. And I'm like, no, I called and it'll be like seven cents more if we if we wait till tomorrow. So I was like, I'm going to go right now to the bank and pay it off. And he's like, it's only seven cents. And I'm like, well, it's seven cents more that we can put on the next one because it wasn't our last debt. So I was like, no, mm -hmm. we got to get aggressive with even the change because right. we're changing. So. Mm -hmm. The Sunday Night Sit Down is being brought to you by our friends at Policy Genius. That's your go to stop to meet all of your insurance needs because they have a totally free tool on their website where all you have to do is put in your information and you will get instant quotes from multiple reputable insurance providers so that you can make the best decision possible when it comes time to purchase insurance. To find out more details, all you have to do is go to hisandhermoney.com slash policy genius. Now, you guys kind of briefly spoke about your children. Backtrack a little bit when you all were in the transition from the way of life that you all were living financially and you all then decided to make some changes. Was the thought of creating a legacy for your children at all a part of your decision and your motivation for the change? Definitely. I'm going to say as a mother, I, I have three sons, so I'm raising three future heads of household. So now, I mean, 
we know that we're impacting, that's going to impact generations, but we're raising three future heads of households and we want them to move forward in whatever direction that they go correctly. So it's, it's very important. I take them even now to like pay some of our bills, give them cash and they mm-hmm. go in, I hand them the bill, they read it. I'm like, oh, this is our utility bill. How much does it say it owes? Okay. You take the money, you take it to the counter. You owe it. I don't pull it out of their, their actual money, but I have them walk through the process so that they can understand that things don't come out of the air. You know, like even our utilities don't come out of the air because it's it's a life lesson. Um, budgeting is a life lesson. Yep. Living debt free is a life lesson. And if we don't plant it now, how can we expect them to thrive later? I want the re- roots within them to grow really deep now while they're in our house because we have total control. Because when they go out into the world, they're not going to be moved mm-hmm. by by what is out there. And they're not going to be like wanting to fleece a car or, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to know what life is to not have a car payment. And we are, you know, planning to aggressively pay off this home, which we haven't been in for even three years, um, because I want them to know that you can have a house without a house payment. Mm-hmm. You can have a car without a car payment. And for me, I went to college and graduated in four years with no debt, no college, no student loans, that can be their truth. They don't have to believe the lie, you know? I think that's so huge because you all are given, like no outside forces can tell them that you have to have a student loan. Cause well, no, my mom didn't have a student loan and no outside forces can say, Everybody has a car payment. Well, no, my parents don't have a car payment. You know what I mean? And that that in itself is yeah. a game changer. If we good. just if we just fix our house and give our kids the blueprint that we set for ourselves, we can quiet all the noise that comes from society in this regard in regards to our finances. So that is a huge, huge. principle that you just shared. Huge for sure. Yeah. I mean, one of the things about our kids is a common phrase they'll say is, what can I do to earn money? You know, they have, they see a, like a toy or some or game they simply they won't. They, they, their first question is, you know, so what can I do to earn some money? Because mm-hmm. they know that we don't just hand them money. So they're always looking like, you know, can I shovel the snow or can I rake some leaves or, you know, what can I do? Mm-hmm. And then, we you know, we give them opportunities to, mm-hmm. to earn some money and they, and they enjoy it. Yeah. And that's something that was powerful that I really didn't know was in them till I sat and I asked them one day at the end of our first round through FPU. Now I asked them, I was like, well, where does money come from? And they were like, from the bank. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, where does it come from when it goes to the bank? And they said, from work. So they had already made the association that money comes from work, not my pocket, you know, Mm -hmm. not, I don't know, some fairy in the sky. They they associated work with money. And even my, our now four-year-old, he associates work with money and he'll help me bring in groceries. And sometimes if he's the only one who does it, I give him a dollar or two and he stuffs it in his wallet, yeah. you know? So he, he understands that. So they don't have to be teenagers to understand. They can understand that, you know, two, three years old, you mm-hmm. know, they, they watch what you're doing. And as Rachel Ray, I'm not Rachel Ray, Rachel Cruz says in, you know, in everything, she's like, more is caught than taught. And that is so powerful. Yeah. So we had to choose to be a good example because we were going to be an example in their life, but we didn't want to be a bad example. We didn't want them to see the bondage of debt and think that that was what their future held for them. Yeah, yeah. that is dope. So, Walk us through that moment when you guys paid off the last part of that $119,000 of debt. Tell us about it. Paint the picture yeah. for everybody. <laughs> I tell you, it was, it was a great feeling, but it really didn't change us a whole lot because in our mind, we were already debt free mm-hmm. from when we made the decision and we had our plan in place and we were communicating. We were completely, you know, we were already feeling completely debt free. Mm-hmm. But, but I can still remember that day. When we got together and we made that final payment, and our final payment was eight thousand hmm? dollars. Yeah, yeah. Was it eighty eight hundred? Eighty eight hundred. Okay, eighty eight hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. So, it was, so it was a huge payment, um, thanks to like bonus and and other income. So we were able to put it down, and 
it was almost not real. You know, it's, it's like we were waiting for it to clear in the bank. You know, we were like looking at it, like checking, it, like came, re, re, looking refresh or whatever, looking for it to go to zero and just waiting because it, it still didn't really it really didn't hit us. I don't think until this month because we were we paid off our debt on what was it? February 28th. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So February 28th, 2017 is when we became officially debt free. And so this month after we got our paycheck, that's when it really hit us that. Wow, you know we don't have debt to send money to. You mm -hmm. know we can actually start funding our emergency fund. I mean that was that was a cool feeling knowing that the same amount of money is going somewhere, but we're we're paying ourselves this money instead of paying somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put it in this term for people because I think people can get a visual of this. Um, when we made the decision, that's kind of when we conceived the idea. So we conceived it when you're pregnant, you conceive it, people don't see it, then you're showing, but you still got you still got to walk out that time. So we knew it was happening. We knew the baby of debt freedom was coming. Mm -hmm. And the day it came, that's the day that the baby was born. And we were so thankful, well, that that type of baby was <laughs> premature because really we thought we were still several months out. But like I said, my husband is a very hard, diligent worker, and that was that was rewarded with promotion and um, increase that helped us to get out of a situation that we put ourselves into. So, yeah. So, so the baby was born. Oh, go ahead. Um, I meant to also ask, during your uh, debt payoff process, were there any obstacles that you guys had to overcome? Yeah. When we first made the decision to not charge things, because we charged groceries, gas, <laughs> car maintenance. Like really, I'm not sure if we paid cash for really anything except for debt. So basically we paid for debt just to get into more debt yeah. every single month. So we charged everything to the point where we never carry cash. We just swiped. And it was a little, I don't know. We ran out of money the first couple of months. Yeah, and like, we were just like, we're, <laughs> like gonna, oh. we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure it out. We're not tough. And, and then my car needed like new tires and uh, yeah, brakes and, up, yeah. and all the stuff. And we cash flowed it. And I don't think we'd done that before in our life. And like one of the bills was like eleven hundred dollars. And I remember going to the bank and specifically getting eleven hundred dollars cash instead of swiping it with a debit card, even or credit card and just laying it on the counter. And to me, that was like when we changed, we really, we made our decision, but we stuck to it too. Yeah. So we stuck to it there and we learned to just plan and cash flow for things instead of, well, I'll charge it and think about it sometime about five years from now. So mm -hmm. we, um, we did that, but our obstacles weren't obstacles because we already made a decision mm -hmm. so you know some people would have looked at it like a mountain they were pebbles and we were able to walk over them or kick them out of the way and move forward yeah so, and because we had so many reasons i mean our reasons were strong enough where those obstacles really just couldn't penetrate us i mean they, they, they weren't gonna be able to stop us mm -hmm. and i think one of the things that it helped kick motivation a little bit too was you know i looked at how much interest we were paying per month and I realized that we could have been taking that same amount of money and paying our kids, um, you know, funding their college fund with that. Because we were, you know, we were spending over, it was over over $600 a month in interest charges. Yeah. Just throwing money away like that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, wow. So, I mean, you guys did it. You guys paid off a bunch of debt. There was lots of twists and turns along the way. What do you think was the biggest lesson about life that you guys learned during this process? I think that we can do anything. To, a unified couple can accomplish anything. Yes. You know, I mean, that's scriptural. But, you know, we, we, we realize that now that we can do anything. I mean, if we can accomplish this $119,000 in 11 months, I mean, I know we can we can do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with a with a base salary of less than that. So you got to hustle. You got to hustle, you know, but we didn't fall into it overnight. So we didn't expect to get out of it overnight, but we could hustle and we made it happen because that unification really. God blessed it. <laughs> like God blessed it. One thing that I think that is so remarkable about uh, you guys story is that you all have been married for 20 years. So majority of your marriage has been, you know, credit cards and debt. So you guys are a living proof 
um, right here in front of everyone, if they can hear you or if they can watch you, that it's never too late. You know, 20 years of their marriage in debt, and now the last past, what, 11, 11 months. months, they paid it off, and now you all are debt-free. That's, that's amazing. It really is. Yeah, because so many people get stuck in their ways. Yeah, they, and they say, think they can't change. You know, right? listen, that's for the, that's for, that's for the newlyweds. Yeah. You know, they're in love. You know, yeah. this, this, is, this, is just, this is just what we Wait do. Wait till they get our age. Or yeah. yeah. Yep. But you guys said, no, no, we're going to change yeah. right here and right now. So you guys definitely should be commended and Seriously. applauded. And you guys are an inspiration to everybody that's listening right now. What are some, because you guys mentioned that one of the, the components that kept you guys motivated in this journey was you guys were constantly reading. So help our audience out by giving them some recommendations as far as books that they could read to help them mo- to help them get motivated in this process. Okay, I'll let you do the books. Well, I want to encourage all people who are thinking about uh, embarking on a financial journey it's to you know get this book which will come in your fpu kit i don't want to cover my husband <laughs> but in your fpu kit and read it like I'm actually like read it and it's called dave ramsey's complete guide to money um you need to like read it take notes study it because this is your life this is your financial life so with this read it take it take the class and we both <laughs> read that book we both read the book yeah. and then you know like get over the comparisons i mean we're we're in our 40s so we do a little bit of social media but 20 somethings they live and breathe by it don't try to keep up with the joneses or the smiths or i don't know the kumars or whoever yeah. don't do it realize that you can be content at any level you know um rich Rachel Cruz's book, Love Your Life, Not Theirs. And, and um, we, The Richest Man in Babylon. And, you know, right. right here, small, thin book. You can get it on the audio. Might take you a couple hours to book. But I think it's something powerful to just read in a book. But Richest Man in, ba- in, in Babylon, check it out for yourself. You know, that's by George Classen. Classen. I never remember the authors. <laughs> and this. This is this is actually by someone who we went to school with, we went to college with, and he came out and he just had a, you know a realization that hey budgets really work and they could work for me too, and he actually realized that now his net worth is a million dollars. He still works you know a job now, and it's called the Uncommon Millionaire, and his name is Alfred D. Riddick. Um, you know this this book I think now is available in like Kroger branded stores too, as well as Amazon, um, and then just. Uh, obviously the Bible, you know, read it, understand that those principles are true and they're true for you, you know? So those are, I think the keys right there and just keeping your mind saturated Mm -hmm. by like looking at his and her money, you know, America's number one money couple. And, (laughs) and, you know, uh, Lydia sent like you, there are so many resources available to you now. And you also have your library, which is free. So you don't have to spend money to get yourself educated, but realize that you don't have to be in school to learn and get yourself educated. Mm -hmm. And don't think that just because you have a degree in in a diploma or whatever you have, a certificate that that's your time to stop learning. That's really just your ticket to start because now you're, you can start and take yourself to the moon if you want. Um, but it's, it's your choice. It's your choice. And, and one of the things doing our journey, I mean, we didn't, we didn't stop life. Like Sly and I are teachers at church in our children's church program, kindergarten um, yeah. students. Mm-hmm. And we still did, we still allowed our kids to go to movies every once in a while. You know, we did everything on a budget, but we still were able to live life. And so our kids weren't deprived at all during this whole journey. Mm-hmm. We weren't deprived. I mean, we still had some some opportunities to date each other and, mm-hmm. and you know, and still make it work. We didn't want a budget or a, a life that was financially responsible to be drudgery. Because if you make it drudgery, they're not gonna wanna do it. Kind of like we wanna be a shining light even with our marriage. Um, with loving each other, because if it's drudgery, who's going to want to do that? What kind of seed are you sowing? So we, um, we wanted to, wanted to focus in on that is just, we wanted to, there's joy in the journey if you want it to be. So we just chose to have joy. You know, we had, we chose to have joy. And even like he said, with those obstacles, when we were like paying out money, we're like, ah, this could go to our debt and get us out sooner. But you know what? There was joy because we could budget for those things um, now 
as we never had before. So yeah. if there was somebody tuned into the show right now who heard your story and they, they were truly inspired by your story and your success, but they're unsure if they can replicate it, if they can do what needs to be done to get out of debt, what words of encouragement would you offer to that person? You can do it. I mean, develop that drive, identify your reasons, find your source of inspiration, you know, create a vision for yourself and then execute the plan. Mm -hmm. That's the, the key, you know, executing the plan mm -hmm. and, and don't give up. Right. And then, I mean, we're a couple, so we unified in the household, but it's very important to have accountability, even as a single. We didn't approach this plan as a single, but you really need to have somebody that you're accountable to because there's unification in that too. But there's also some, obviously, accountability in that um, so that you don't stumble. Or if you do, you have somebody to pick you back up because it's OK if you stumble, if you swipe that card because you just haven't closed them yet. But if you don't get back up, you haven't changed. So just get back up if you stumble and to have somebody there to that's going to be straight with you and go, hey, you know, you said you wanted to be out of debt. And I don't know, going to Bermuda for three weeks is just not getting it. So, you know, you can do it. You can do it. Find somebody to get accountable with. Figure out your plan and work your plan. Amen. 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 So tell everybody about you all's website and how they can connect with you. OK, so our website is mainly a family website. It's, it's www.meetthepopes.com. Mm -hmm. And just like I said, it's just it's family. It's more of a family website. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We'll be sure to have links to everything that you all mentioned in the show notes of this episode. Just simply go to hisandhermoney.com slash podcast. Michael, Sonia, this has been incredible, inspirational, to say the least. And we really appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedule to share your incredible yeah. story with everybody. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for having us on. God bless, guys.